My next guest is warning of just that. Joining me right now is South Carolina Senator and Judiciary Committee Chairman Lindsey Graham. Senator, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So this is just one issue that you and I have spoken about in the past, that people in South Carolina are making right. more money staying home than they are at work. But there are other issues as well. I want to get your take on first assessing the right. PPP, this paycheck program for, from the Small Business Administration. How are things going, Senator? It's getting better. Uh, there are more loans going out the door. It's a good program. The goal of the program is to keep small businesses from going bankrupt because they're having to be shut down to deal with mitigation. Restaurants, bars, gyms, all kind of places are shut down because people can't uh, show up in large numbers. Uh, and the forgiveness comes if the employer borrows the money and keeps people on the payroll. The goal of the program for forgiveness sakes is to keep people from going on unemployment. Here's the problem. In South Carolina, you're getting $23 an hour to be unemployed. A lot of these businesses pay $15 and $16 an hour to their employees. So there's a tension there that's undercutting the purpose of the program, which is to keep people on the payroll, and we've got to deal with that. Yes, I know that. And, and that's one issue. But there's another issue as well, because the whole idea of giving a small business, and this is what I keep railing about. I've been talking about this for a week, this eight week period yeah. where a small business borrows the money. They get the money in order to get that loan forgiven. They've got to send much of that money out the door and, and, and send it to their employees so that the employee right. stays on the payroll. That's great for the employee, but that's not right. going to stop the company from going bankrupt, Senator. They're still there with, with, with the bills that they need to pay and no revenue coming in. So if the paycheck program could move the timeline, whereas you start the clock ticking on that eight-week period when we're out of a shutdown, I think it would probably be uh, doable for some businesses and keep them alive. Not now, though, not in this eight-week period while they're still shut down. Well, let's, let's unpack that. That's a really good point. Under the law, 75% of the loan has to be given to pay payroll. Well, a lot of places like New York, the rent and all the uh, business expenses are probably more than 25%. So that 75-25 needs to be revisited. But the goal is to keep the company from going bankrupt and while they're shut down, for the company to pay the employees so they don't have to go on unemployment. Well, the problem is unemployment pays people more than they actually make. So you're having people not stay on the payroll but draw unemployment benefits, which may make it hard for the employer to get forgiveness if he can't retain 75% of his employees. So the unemployment system is undercutting the SBA loan program. Exactly. So that that wh what do you want to do about that? I mean, I know that there is conversation now about the additional money going into the program because the money is already running right. out. Look, you've got to, you know, look at the right. uh, the Small Business Administration and recognize that they gave out twenty three billion dollars one, one year. And now they're expected to give out three hundred and fifty yeah, yeah. billion dollars in three weeks. So <laughs> I, I get that. But what kind of changes will we see, Senator? Right. Okay, number one, I want to look at changing the 75-25 split so that businesses can have more money to pay, pay their business expenses. Number two, I want to make sure that we Bingo. do not I incentivize people to leave the payroll to go into unemployment. The goal of this program is to keep people off the unemployment rolls. The third thing is I want to make sure the money is going to Main Street not to people who really are well off or taking advantage of the program. I think more of the money should go through community banks. We have about 3,500 banks now that are participating in this program. And what I worry about is pretty solvent businesses seeing an opportunity to get $10 million free from the federal government. So I want to focus on Main Street, the small, small business, uh, and have more community bank lending instead of the big banks. So that's another thing I worry about. So are you doing hearings on this? How will you actually move the needle on making these changes? <laughs> Everything no. you say, I've heard the same exact thing from small businesses, Senator. Yeah. Well, one, this has been a good program, but the whole purpose was to keep the business from going bankrupt and having people on a payroll rather than unemployment. 
The unemployment system was never envisioned, envisioned to be more generous than staying on the payroll. We got to fix that. We can't do that for four more months because we're going to add people to the unemployment roles. You may have an incentive here in the unemployment benefits taking people out of the workforce larger than the virus itself. We've got to make sure the money is going to small businesses, not people who are pretty well off. And we've got to change the 75-25 mm. so the person doesn't lose their business. If you don't do those three things, this program cannot be to its highest and best use. Because it didn't start out so smooth, did it? Well, but, you know, but it, it, Mnuchin's done a good job. I mean, <clears throat> he yes. did a good job. I mean, we're talking about 20 percent of the country being unemployed. You can't get through to the unemployment right. agencies. My state has processed 180,000 unemployment claims. You're having businesses dump their employees into unemployment. They keep paying their health insurance. Mm. No system was ever set up to run this way. So this small business program is designed to keep people out of unemployment and I think is uh, being undercut by the benefit schedule. Yeah. Let me ask you about this. The Senate adjourned yesterday without either party attempting the, to pass the stalled coronavirus yeah. aid bill for the second time. The meeting lasted yeah. approximately 30 seconds, delaying and, uh, until at least Thursday. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. Well, I, I think we see the need to, to put more money into the small business loan program. It's being highly utilized, but I want to make sure that the money's being lent to the people who need it the most. We need to revisit, revisit the 75-25 split to make sure people have enough money to pay the bills. And again, we need to reform the unemployment system. I want to put more money into the program. Democrats want to put more money into hospitals and state government coffers. The real emergency is that the small business loan program is running out of money. We should do that first with some reform. But people keep asking me, when is it going to get better? It's never going to go back yeah. to normal until we get a vaccine and drug therapies. I think 2020 is going to be a lost summer for tourism purposes. I can't imagine Myrtle Beach receiving much of tourism this summer. I think college football, I hope we can play, but you're going to have a lot of empty stands. So we need to get these programs right because this problem is going to be with us for most of 2020. Yeah, I mean, we just saw some earnings coming out this morning, Senator. J.P. Morgan profits plummeting. Wells Fargo, they're all raising money because they're talking about, J Jamie Dimon said he's expecting a severe recession that is likely. So you say right off the summer, you maybe just right off all of 2020. Well, here's what I'm saying. I live in a tourism state. I was on the phone yesterday with, with a bunch of people on restaurants and bars and golf courses in Myrtle Beach. I do not see June, July, and August being a full summer in terms of tourism. I see this virus coming back in the fall. I think we're doing a good job to be ready for the fall. Drug therapies to take it from a 10 to one or two are essential. You need a vaccine, but that's probably yeah. next year. I see reduced uh, football seasons in terms of people being present at the game. I hope we can play football, but I don't see full stands. And these programs, these loan programs, are vital to keep American small businesses from going bankrupt. The unemployment insurance program is to keep uh, an income stream coming in to people until we can reopen the economy. And both of them need to yeah. be looked at. The unemployment system is failing this country. And on, on top of that, speaking of your hometown, you've got a devastating tornado tearing through your hometown of Seneca, <laughs> South Carolina, yesterday morning. Yeah. You had rescue teams on the ground responding. Yeah. Um, we send you our, our, our good wishes and, and, and best regards on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm can fine. you tell us anything about the impact there? Yeah, so the, these alert systems work. So my phone went off about 3.30 the night before last saying shelter and I thought a train was coming through the house. It hit a neighborhood right ab above me very hard. We lost one person in Seneca, but my hometown got hit by an ES3 hurricane. And the person that was killed was a contractor worker at Borg Warner plant. And that plant would have normally been operating on the third shift with 200 people but because of the coronavirus. It was virtually empty. And so I guess that's a blessing in disguise there.
Oh, God. Senator, I'm so sorry to hear all that. Before you go, are, 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 is it likely that we will see a fourth relief package at this point, Senator? I mean, look, the last package, you had so many Absolutely. people, your colleagues on the left, trying to th jam in other things like funding for Planned Parenthood. Yeah. You, did get, you did have to agree to the $25 million to the Kennedy Center. But what is the fourth package yeah. going to look like? Well, President Trump, I think, has done a damn good job of lowering the projected death rate. He's made three big decisions. He closed uh, travel down from China and Europe, right? And he put in place uh, some strong mitigation <clears throat> matters, uh, uh, practices in March. Now, for us to reopen the economy, we're going to have to have a vaccine and therapies to keep people healthy. So what I want in this package is a stimulus package. Telemedicine is really coming online in a big way. I want broadband to rule America so they can really receive telemedicine medicine at its highest and best use. I think there's things in this package that have to be uh, stimulus in the fourth quarter. There is no economy to stimulate right now, but the package has to be forward looking and it can't have a bunch of pork in it. It's got to be about rebuilding the country uh, so we can get people back to work, not about your pet project. Do you want part of it? Do you want something in there that forces companies to move their supply chains out of China and back to the United States? Uh, absolutely. When you do a deep dive, lessons learned, we can't have 90% of antibiotics made in China. We can't have most of our personal protective equipment outsourced. We got to bring it back into the country. And if we don't punish China, there'll be a fourth pandemic. This is the third pandemic to come from China. These wet markets are, are pandemic incubators. And if we don't hold China, uh, China accountable as a world, not just as a nation, you can expect more of this. So we got a lot to do. I hope we can have an election in November where people can actually go up and go to the polls. But the president, in my view, has avoided 2.2 million Americans from dying because he rejected the herd theory. Let it run through the society. We'll build up immunity. Yeah. Thank God he rejected that. Under the best scenario, yeah. we were looking at 100 to 240,000 uh, deaths. I think we're going to beat that. Yep. And, and, and thank you for your leadership. Senator, real quick before you go, you said China has to be held accountable. How? What are you going to do? Uh, I, would, I would basically punish the hell out of China. We have about $1.3 trillion in Treasury notes they hold where we owe them money. I would start taking some of the money away from China, canceling some of the debt, Marshall Blackburn's bill. Uh, Tom Cotton's got legislation to move the supply chain, supply chain back. But I'd start literally sending China a bill for the uh, 17 million people unemployed and the 23,000 deaths. All right. We will leave it there. Senator, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. Thanks so much. Thank you.